Toops Graphics presents Mastering the Star Test, 6th grade math. Let's learn how to model fractions. Toops Graphics takes you on the road again to learn about on how to model again. fractions. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Let's talk about fractions. What is a fraction? A fraction, like 3 over 4, is a comparison of two numbers. The top number of a fraction is called the numerator, and the bottom or down number is called the denominator. You can also read this as a division problem. It would be 3 divided by 4. A fraction is usually used to represent a quantity that is less than a whole unit. By modeling the fraction, you can easily see how much of the unit the fraction represents. For the purpose of this lesson, we'll use a rectangle, let's say it's a cake, to represent a whole unit. How would you model three-fourths of the cake? When modeling a fraction, you want to start by looking at the denominator. The denominator tells you how many pieces your cake will be cut up into. In this example, our cake will be cut up into four pieces. Look at the denominator. Since the denominator is four and it's even, let's cut the cake in half. Our cake now has two pieces, but we need four pieces. We need to split each half into two pieces to have four. Now let's look at the numerator. The numerator tells you how many pieces you have. To show this, let's X in three of the four pieces. This is how you would model three-fourths. But wait, there's more! There's yet another way to model three over four. Let's start by looking at the denominator. To find all the ways to model 3 over 4, we need to write out the factors of the denominator of 4. Let's find the factors of 4. 1 and 4 are factors of 4, but 4 also has factors of 2 times 2. The factors let you know how you can model the fraction. The factors tell you how to slice up the cake that you're going to model. If you look at our model of 3 over 4, you can see that the cake is sliced into an array of one row by four columns of slices. You can also model 3 over 4 by using the factor of 2 times 2. Your cake should have two rows and two columns. Let's start off with our blank rectangle or cake. We still need to slice the cake in half, giving us the two columns. To model the factors of 2 times 2, our next slice will be horizontal. This gives us a 2 by 2 grid of 4 pieces. Now model the numerator by placing 3 X's into 3 of the 4 pieces. You have successfully modeled 3 over 4 in another way. By looking at both models, you can see how they illustrate that 3 fourths is more than half since over half of the cake is X'd out. Now let's model 2 over 5. Remember, you want to start by looking at the denominator. The denominator will tell you how many pieces there will be in your cake. Since the denominator is 5 and 5 is a prime number, its only factors are 1 times 5. That means you'll have to slice up your cake into five vertical columns. Now let's look at the numerator. The numerator tells you how many pieces will be X'd. In this case, the numerator is two. That means two of the five pieces will be X'd. By modeling two over five, you can easily see that less than half of the cake is X'd. Therefore, two fifths is less than one half. Now it's your turn. On your own paper, let's model 2 over 3. You'll have 30 seconds to draw a rectangle and model 2 over 3.
let's see how you did. Remember, you start by looking at the denominator. The denominator tells you the number of pieces in your rectangle. The factors of 3 are 1 times 3, so you should have 3 vertical columns in your rectangle. Now look at the numerator. The numerator tells you the number of pieces that are X'd. In this case, we'll X 2 of the 3 pieces. By looking at the model of the fraction, you can clearly see that 2 thirds is more than 1 half, since over half of the cake is X'd out. Now let's model a fraction that has two possible outcomes. Let's model 5 over 6. Remember, you need to start by writing the factors of 6 out. There are two possible combinations. You'll have 40 seconds to draw two rectangles and model 5 over 6. You should have started off by factoring 6 to 1 times 6 and to 2 times 3. One rectangle will have 6 vertical columns, while the other rectangle will have 2 rows and 3 columns. Let's start by modeling the 1 by 6 rectangle. Since 6 is even, slice it in half. Now we have 2 vertical pieces. We need 6, so each side needs 3 pieces. You need to cut each half with two slices to end up with six pieces. Now let's slice up the two by three rectangle. We need three vertical columns. So make two slices vertically to make the three pieces. Now we need two rows going across. So all you have to do is slice it across halfway and you'll end up with six pieces in your rectangle. Now let's look at the numerator. The numerator's 5, so we need to X in 5 of the 6 pieces. After you X in 5 of the 6 pieces, your model should look like this. By modeling 5 over 6, you could easily see that over half of each rectangle is X'd in. Therefore, 5 over 6 would be more than 1 half. Now let's model a fraction with more power. Let's model 5 over 12. You need to start off by finding the factors of the denominator, which is 12. 12 has three possible factor combinations. So you need to draw three rectangles. You will have 60 seconds to model 5 twelfths in the three rectangles. Let's see how you did. The first thing is to find the factors of 12. 12 is equal to 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Those will be the arrays of grids that we will use to create our rectangles. Let's start with the 1 by 12 grid. Since the denominator is 12 and it's even, let's splice the rectangle in half. 
To make 12 vertical columns, each half will need 6 pieces. Since 6 is even, slice each half into half. Now we have 4 vertical columns. We want to have 12, so each column will need 3 pieces. That means each column of 4 needs 2 slices to create the 3 pieces. After you slice each column twice, you'll end up with 12 pieces. Now let's model the 2 by 6 rectangle. We need 6 vertical columns. You've already created a 6. You're going to slice the rectangle in half and then slice each half with 2 more slices to create your 6 pieces. Now we need to create 2 horizontal rows. You only have to slice your 6 pieces in half horizontally to create the 12 pieces. Finally, let's model the 3 by 4 rectangle. We need 4 vertical columns. So slice the rectangle in half and slice each half in half to make your 4 pieces. Now we need to model the 3 horizontal columns. You need to make 2 slices equally spaced horizontally across the rectangle to make the 3 by 4 grid. Now that we've used the denominator to create three e rectangles that have 12 pieces, let's use the numerator to find out how many pieces will be x The numerator is 5, so we'll x 5 of the 12 pieces. Now that we've used our numerator to x in 5 of the 12 pieces, we can see how our models demonstrate that 5 twelfths is a little less than half of the rectangle. In summary, a fraction can be modeled with a rectangle. The denominator tells you the number of pieces in your rectangle. The numerator tells you the number of pieces that you will X out. The factors of the denominator will tell you how many ways you could model the fraction. In this case, three-fourths can be modeled two ways. And finally, by using the model, you can see if the model is more than one half or less than one half. In this case, three fourths takes up more than half of the rectangle. This video was produced by Tubes Graphics. Tubes Graphics, always believe.